हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर प्रणव खोचे फ्रॉम नूतन विद्या प्रसारक मंडल आर्ट्स कॉमर्स एंड साइंस कॉलेज लासलगा अंडर द कोर्स ऑफ एस वाई बी ए कंपलसरी इंग्लिश इन सावित्री बाई फुले पुणे यूनिवर्सिटी इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द लेसन सिंपल फिलोसॉफी बाय सी एथर दिस लेसन इज एक्चुअली a letter written by chief seattle who was the chief of the native american squamish tribe of the state of washington and he addresses the american president franklin pierce the native american people mean the people who originally lived in america who are the native inhabitants of america especially north america which is now called most of its part is now called the united states of america friends britishers and many other countrymen went there and established their colonies and so afterwards those colonies came to know as united states of america we know about the american war of freedom boston tea party and all those things but behind the, those glorious things those glorious events there is also a dark history hidden where you find the records of slaughter of these native american people native americans who were also called red indians the slaughter took place this killing of red indians or the native americans took place when these colonizers when these british and other people established their colonies and grabbed the land from seized the land from took the land by force from those people in this particular letter chief seattle is addressing the president of usa franklin pierce about the offer about the offer the president has made before discussing in detail you can see here this is a rare photograph now it is widely obviously widely available on the net but there are not many photographs taken of chief seattle so it is the photograph of chief seattle you can see here his traditional dress his traditional attire those feathers and other things right now let's look at the summary and notes for this later a simple philosophy in 1854 seattle the chief of the native american squamish tribe of the united states state of washington the usa addressed this letter to president franklin pierce as we earlier discussed the white people who had settled their colonies were taking over more and more land from the native american tribes in this particular letter chief seattle expresses concern of the native americans earlier known as red indians about the wish of the president to buy their land he also explains their philosophy that protects the natural environment so in this letter he indirectly warns the white people that their excessive greed for natural resources will bring trouble trouble to all 
the people. At the beginning of the letter, the chief addresses the American president as the great chief in Washington as it is the capital of the USA. He says that the president has offered to buy their land and he also offers his friendship and goodwill. He says that the Native Americans cannot refuse this offer. Otherwise, he knows that the white people will come with guns and take the land. So here, the chief suggests that he knows the ways of the white people. He also remarks at the history. He also kind of tells about the history of the conflict between the Native Americans and the white people when he says that if we do not give our la land, if we do not sell our land, then you will come with guns and grab our land forcefully. So, as you will see, this letter is full of irony. At the same time, this letter is full of poetry. It means that it is poetic in tone. At the same time, it is political as well. As the chief knows about the white people, he says that his words are his promise. But for the chief, for the, the, his people, the very idea of buying the land seems very strange. He asks in the letter, how can you buy or sell the sky? I am reading from this that letter. How can you buy or sell the sky, the warmth of the land? The idea is strange to us. We do not own the freshness of the air or the sparkle of the water. How can you buy them from us? We will decide in our time. Every part of this earth is sacred to my people. Every shining pine needle, every sandy shore, every mist in the dark woods, every humming insect is holy in the memory and experience of my people. Every mist, you know mist is kind of fog that appears in the morning, that appears at the dawn. So in this paragraph he suggests that the nature it is very much sacred to the chief and his people. At the same time, the nature and natural things, nature and natural things cannot be bought and sold. He tries to tell the president that they have to understand the ways of the Native American people. All these things are natural, whether it is warmth of the land or whether it is sky or sparkle of the water, freshness of air, all these things are natural and he wants to emphasize that they cannot be bought or sold. The chief differentiates between the ways of the white man and the ways of his people, the Native Americans. He points out that the white man's thoughts about nature are different from the Native Americans. The white people do not hold nature as sacred and considers land as not their brother but an enemy. Their appetite for the land and their appetite for the natural resources will change the earth into desert and the cities of the white people paint the red man the Native American's eyes. I read some lines from his letter itself. We know that 
the white man does not understand our ways. One portion of the land is the same to him as the next, for he is a stranger who comes in the night and takes from the land whatever he needs. The earth is not his brother, but his enemy, and when he has conquered it, he has won it, he moves it. He moves on. He leaves his father's graves behind and he does not care. It means that the white man does not care about the traditions. He does not care about nature and land especially is not sacred to the white man. I again read there is no quiet place in the white man's cities. No place to hear the leaves of spring or the rustle of insect wings. But perhaps, ironically, the chief says, but perhaps because I am a savage, that is, a wild man, uncivilized man, right? Not civilized, not urban. But perhaps because I am a savage, and do not understand the clatter that is the sounds various sounds only seem to insult the ears while air is precious to the red man the white man doesn't notice the air at all like a dying man he says like a dying man he is numb to the smell Chief Seattle says that like a dying man, the white man is numb to the sail, smell, smell of the air, smell of the nature, smell of nature. Chief Seattle's, Seattle says that he will accept the offer of sailing the land to the white people. He will accept the offer on one condition that the white man must treat the animals as brothers because he has seen them killing thousands of wild buffaloes to make railroads. So when the white people, when the settlers, the white settlers, they, they are called settlers because they settled the colonies in America. So. When the settlers laid the railroads, when they constructed the railroad roads for railways, for trains, they killed so many animals. They cut so much of forests. So he says that he has seen the wild buffaloes killed, unnecessarily being killed by the white man to make railroads. In the letter itself, he calls the train as smoking iron horse. In the letter, he again ironically says, I am a savage and do not understand how the smoking iron horse, that is the train. So how the smoking iron horse can be more important than the buffalo that we kill only to stay alive. Now remember, friends, that these Native Americans or any Aboriginal or any Native man does not kill animal just for fun. They do not kill animals just for enjoyment or just for the thrill of hunting. They kill animals if at all they kill animal, they do it or they used to do it only for their survival. The wild buffalo is also called bison. Actually, it is not a buffalo, but it is a bison. See, this is a very great, very big beast of bovine family that is belonging to the family of cows our common buffaloes, Indian bison. So, 
in the beginning when the settlers settled their colonies and started so called development remember that development must be sustainable means it should be it should go in ha- hand in hand with natural development development of nature otherwise unplanned unsustainable development destroys nature and finally destroys human beings as well so these great beasts were killed in thousands thousands of these american buffalo or bisons were killed by the white people when they developed when they constructed railroads he warns the white man chief seattle warns the white man that if beasts are gone the man will also die he this is a warning and if we see that today the warning is coming true that as now we have woken up now human beings the so called modern people so called civilized people they think that they are the only civilized people but true civilization i believe existed in these native americans in the native people of all countries who cared for nature who understood this earth and this environment much better than us the modern man the chief says i read from the later what is man without the beasts if all the beasts means animals if all the beasts were gone men would die from great loneliness of spirit this phrase is very important great loneliness of spirit for whatever happens to the beasts also happens to man all things are connected see his understanding all things are connected whatever befalls the earth befalls the son of the earth now son of the earth is man so whatever befalls means whatever happens to the earth the same thing will happen to man if you destroy the earth you will also in turn will be destroyed the chief further refers to the defeat of his tribes by the white people and he fears that in future they will disappear the red indians the native americans will be disappear will disappear completely he says in the later our children have seen their fathers humbled in defeat our warriors have felt shame he is referring to the defeat and the slaughter and the killing by the white people of his tribe and after defeat they turn their days to idleness and they contaminate means they take whatever is unwanted they contaminate their bodies with sweets food and drink it matters little where we pass the rest of our days they are not many here the chief hints that if the same thing happens already in the past thousands rather lakhs of these red indians they were murdered by the white people and now therefore he says that very few days are left for those native indian tribes so they he i read again a few hour few more hours a few more winters and none of the children of the great tribes that once lived on the earth or that roamed in small bands in the woods will be left to mourn the graves of a people once as powerful and hopeful as yours he says that he calls his own tribe and the tribes of the native americans as great tribes he calls those people as great people but he says that 
a time will come that there will be no native people anymore on this earth in the United States of America because they will be destroyed with the destruction of nature. Chief Seattle confirms that there is only one God and the earth is precious to him. He says that the God of the white man and the God of the native man is one and the same and the earth and nature is precious to him. Any harm to the earth will anger the creator that is God. The destruction of nature will finish the white man too. He confirms that. I again read from the later. The whites too shall pass perhaps sooner than other tribes. Continue to contaminate your bed and you will one night suffocate in your own waste. Means, if you destruct nature, you will die. You contaminate your own bed, you will suffocate in your own waste. Means that, if you harm nature, if you pollute nature, you will also die because you are in a way contaminating your own bed and it will harm you definitely. The chief says that his people cannot know the white man's visions. I'm sorry. If all wild animals are killed, trees are cut and if man attacks natural world, then it will be the end of living and beginning of dying. This sentence is very significant and perhaps the mankind, the human race has come near to this prospect of the end of living and beginning of dying because, un because of the unlimited destruction of environment. The chief says that his people cannot know the white man's visions as they are hidden. But if both of them, that is, if both of the Native Americans and the white people agree to preserve the natural environment in America, the Native Americans can at least hope to survive for some time. If they agree to sell their land, the white man must love it and care for it like the Native Americans. Otherwise, the white man cannot escape, cannot exempt from the common destiny that is the end of mankind. If the white man does not love the nature like his brother, if he does not care for environment, then what will happen? They will be destroyed. They will be destructive. It will be a common destiny. The Native Americans will also vanish. So the white man will. So the white people will. Chief Seattle says in the later care for it that is care for the land care for it as we have cared for it hold in your mind the memory of the land as it as it is when you take it don't forget how the land was as it is when you take it and with all your strength with all your might and with all your heart Preserve it for your children and love it as God loves us. So the chief Seattle advises the white man, advises even the president to preserve the land for the posterity for the coming generations. If the white man doesn't preserve the land as it is, means 
if it doesn't preserve the na preserve the nature in america environment in america wilderness of america then even he the white man cannot escape from the common destiny of the end of mankind in this way this later written in 1854 more than a century ago is a proof of the wisdom that the so called savage people the so called wild people whom we call the aboriginals or adivasi or mulnivasi these people they possess so much wisdom they care and love nature and understand it more intimately more closely than modern and civilized people seattle's heart touching appeal is equ equally significant today equally important today when we stand at the threshold of total destruction because of the destruction of our earth friends we call ourselves modern civilized educated and so forth and so on but do we really have this right to call ourselves modern because i think these people like the native americans which were called red indians so the native americans or all or all, all the native people of every country even india they really care for nature much more than us and at the same time they are the people at the receiving end of natural disasters because we the modern people we live in buildings we destroy the nature we create colonies there we cut trees we build buildings there we change the rivers and water streams way their paths and we build roads and bridges there and dams there but the people who cannot afford or who do not want to live in building these people get marginalized these people get displaced because of our so called modern development and therefore in today's time this later becomes far more appealing far more significant and far more instructive this is called the old wisdom the later clearly distinguishes between the native americans all the native cultures ways of life which hold nature sacred that is very important if we think about our indian culture we long back very old then we will find that we are also basically nature worshipers but we now only do all the rituals which were originally originally meant for nature worship now we have turned them into mere rituals we do not know rituals means only those rites we only perform something those pujas and everything but we do not know the meaning behind that so we have come away from nature as wordsworth says the world is too much with us means the p the physical world is too much with us the materialistic world is too much with us and we have come away from nature we have come away from our roots which of which chief seathal reminds us 
Therefore, this later distinguishes between the Native Americans ways of life which holds which hold nature sacred and that of the white people and today all developed cultures who consider nature as their enemy. I hope you have enjoyed this lecture. I hope you have also realized the value of environment in the eyes of the native people and if you have any kind of doubts, you can contact me on my personal number. Please do like this video. Please do like this lecture. You can share this lecture to your friends. Right? And I also request you to read the original letter. You can easily find it in your textbook, Panorama. At the same time, you can also find it if you do not have you have not purchased for some reasons your textbook yet then you can also find this letter easily on the inter in on the internet i hope you have understood this discussion thank you so much and take care of yourself